Welcome to our TED Talk. Today we will be discussing fragments and incomplete sentences as well as parallelism. Today, Will will start us off with fragments and incomplete sentences. Fragments and incomplete sentences. A sentence fragment, or an incomplete sentence, is a group of words that begins with a capital letter and ends with a period, question mark, or exclamation point, but is grammatically incomplete. Parts of sentences. In a sentence, there is a subject and a predicate. The subject is a person, place, or thing that is doing or being something. You is the understood subject in a command. Predicates usually follow the subject and tells what the subject does, has, is, what is done to it, or tells where it is. Clauses. There are two types of clauses, independent clauses and dependent clauses. An independent clause contains a subject and a predicate, expresses a complete thought, and can stand alone as a complete sentence. For example, Jack ran through the courtyard. Jack is a subject, and ran is the predicate. In the dependent clause, it contains a subject and a predicate, but cannot stand alone as a complete thought, because it does not express a complete thought. Example, when Jack ran through the courtyard. Connecting clauses. There are two types of ways to connect clauses. You can use a co coordinating conjunction or an independent marker word. A coordinating conjunction connects two clauses with one of the seven conjunctions. They are and, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet. A comma is needed before said conjunctions. Example, I ran to the ballpark, but I forgot my baseball mitt at home. An independent marker word is a connecting word used at the beginning of an independent clause. It always begins a sentence that can stand alone. A semicolon is needed before the independent marker word. Common words are however, consequently, Furthermore, also, moreover, nevertheless, and therefore. For example, I ran to the ballpark. However, I forgot my baseball mitt at home. Now we will be discussing parallelism. Hi guys, this is Andrew Ortiz, and I'm, go I'm going to be explaining parallelism. Parallelism, and. I'm going to go over definition, some examples, and when it is used very, very Well, the definition of parallelism. Parallelism is a similarity of form in words, phrases, or clauses that have similar functions in a sentence or a paragraph. Faulty parallelism is the lack of parallel structure. It creates sentences without a sense of balance. Readers expect parallel word structures, especially when there is some underlying parallelism of meaning. So that's the definition of parallelism. And now I'm going to be explaining a couple of examples of when there is parallelism and when we need to correct them. So, first example is when there's an item in a list. So, the definition would be words, phrases, or clauses in a list or series should all have the same grammatical structure. So, for an example, for items in the list, you can see it's Aaron likes helping people, sharing with people, and caring for people. And parallelism right there is. Aaron likes helping, sharing, and caring, and all these end with ing, making sure they're parallel in the sentence, and people is used in every single phrase, and that shows the structure of parallelism, so it balances out. Another time you have to have parallelism is when you're Sentence is joined by coordinating conjunctions. So, this definition 
Words or phrases joined by the coordinating conjunction should have the same structure. So for here it would be chocolate and peanut butter taste great together. You can see how they're joined by a coordinating conjunction to make it more parallel and works as a sentence. Another example is correlative conjunctions. And definition of this would be elements joined by a correl correlative conjunction such as either, or, and not only, but also should be parallel. So right here would be, we could go fishing or go bicycling. So when it says go fishing or go bicycling, that makes the sentence parallel. You can see how bicycling, fishing, and the same ending. And they have a correlative conjunction. Another example would be comparison and contrast. And definition with this for this would be two elements that are compared or contrasted should be expressed in the parallel structure. So an example, I like blue cars as opposed to red cars. So you can see how blue cars and red cars are parallel and makes the sentence structure balance. And that would be the end of the PowerPoint and Isaiah would be explaining the examples for parallel structure. And thank you for listening. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding of parallelism. Thank you. Now that you have a better understanding of these two topics, I'm going to give you incorrect and correct versions of parallelism and fragments and incomplete sentences. Here are a few examples of parallelism. Here is an incorrect version. Every night I go for a walk, brush my teeth, and would read a book before going to bed. The correct way of saying that would be, every night I go for a walk, brush my teeth, and read a book before going to bed. The first example was incorrect because it was not parallel when it said, brush my teeth and I would read a book before going to bed. That does not go along with the first part of the sentence. Another example would be, the board decided to pass the bill, approve the contract, and it would re-elect the chairman. The correct way of saying that would be to say, the board decided to pass the bill, approve the contract, and re-elect the chairman. It doesn't make sense to put, and it would re-elect the chairman, because that doesn't flow with the first part of the sentence. Examples of fragments and incomplete sentences are coming up next. An incorrect example would be, Joe is. That is obviously not a sentence, but you could say, Joe is smart. That is taking away the fragment. Another example would be eating chicken. That cannot be left alone. You can say, eating chicken is healthy, or Anne is eating chicken. Those are two examples of that. Lastly, reading a book without a cover cannot be left as it is. I am reading a book without a cover can be. One last example. And I went to the store. That can also not be left alone. You would have to say, I went to the movies and went to the store. There has to be a lead to, and I went to the store. Thank you for listening in on our TED Talk. I hope you learned a little bit about parallelism 
and fragments and incomplete sentences. Thank you.